I got a message from somebody on Instagram the other day asking about kind of like the dog training essentials. So like they're going to get into training their dog. They just got a pup. They're going to train it to be a hunting retriever. And they were kind of curious about what gear they needed from the get go. And by the time that they're through training, what gear are they going to need? So this video is going to be going through all of the kind of essential training gear that I use on a daily basis from the time that my dog was a puppy until now she's two and a half years old. Most of this gear that I'm talking about today, you can actually get a discount on it using my code and link down below. Uh, you can go to retrieverstrainingsupply.com and get geared up for your pup. They've got all types of gear, individual gear, but they also have packages. So if you got a puppy package or bumper package, so they've got all kinds of packages to get you geared up to train your dog. So go over there, check it out, and use my code to save you some money. First and foremost, you are going to need a dog, of course, but you're gonna want a slip lead, just like this one. This is from Retriever Training Supply, and this has been the lead that we use. This Here's a yellow one, but this one's green. We use this one for hunting, and this has kind of been her everyday collar. But this is a slip lead, so you can give them a correction and teach them all basic obedience. So this is a great tool, especially coupled with the lead that they sell. Quick detach is great for hunting and it's great for training your dog. So you just have a loop, clips on just like that, quick release, easy peasy. This combo is something that we use every single time that we go train. So you cannot neglect a slip lead. It is going to be your best friend when training your pup. Now talking about puppies, when you're doing puppy training, what I did, I followed the Cornerstone program and we had to teach basic obedience before we got into any kind of retrieving work. And so we started with three things, a clicker, some cut up hot dogs in a treat bag and a place board. So you're going to need all three of those things to train basic obedience. And so this is my clicker, you mark behaviors. It lets you tell your dog, you did good, you're gonna get rewarded with a treat. So treat pouch is extremely handy. Don't overlook it when you're training your puppy. Fill this thing up. I actually would cut up hot dogs, put them in a Ziploc bag and then stick them in here so this didn't get all nasty. So great tool, makes it super easy to be quick with the reward. So clicker and treat, you're gonna need it along with a place board. What are you sniffing, dude? You're like all about what's on this table. I think it's this thing right here, but we'll get into this later. With a place board, you have multiple different options. You can DIY one, you can go buy a Kato board, which I've heard really, really good things about them. And then I've also used the uh, Kennel Cots, Lucky Duck and Mo Marsh make, make them. So uh, all three of those work. You just wanna have a, a spot for your dog. You can use a doormat, you can use any kind of just rectangle or circle, just anything that just is a different platform. Raised is preferred, but you can use like a rug or something if you're doing basic obedience around the house. That's what we do. Like before we feed her, we make her go sit on a doormat and that's her place. So when you're teaching place training, you're gonna need a place board and it's just gonna be all around great useful tool for you from start to finish with your dog. Another thing you're gonna need is a whistle. This is an Acme 210 and a half. Uh, it's not a whistle that you see a whole lot of guys using. It's more of like the British training stuff. This is what Cornerstone said to use, so that's what we used. Um, one thing I do want to say is when you pick a program to train your dog, stick with it. Don't bounce around. Don't change things up. Follow your program start to finish. Don't skip things. Take your time doing it. So following my program to a T, this is the whistle they recommended, and so that's what I use. There's tons of different whistles out there. Use the one that you prefer most, but you are going to need a whistle to train your dog. Now, when you start to get into retrieving work, you're gonna need some gear. This was a piece of gear that I had to use a lot. <laughs> this is a check cord. So as you can see, mine's just a rope, but they sell like real check cords. Uh, I just had an extra slip lead around, so I tied the rope to the slip lead, and boom, we had our check cord, so I could always have control of my dog. If you ask anybody who's trained a dog, I'm, I'm sure everybody's had this experience where they just get fed up with the check cord, but it's extremely useful in the early stages of retriever training when you're teaching the fundamentals of the retrieve. So you're gonna need a check cord, you can DIY one like I did, or you can go out and buy one. So totally up to you on what you do with that, but it's gonna be extremely useful and you will want to use this and keep using it until you have a consistent recall 
with your dog coming back to you. All right, now the fun part. We're gonna talk about bumpers. These are cornerstone bumpers, but Retriever Training Supply sells the same ones. They got all kinds of different shapes and sizes. This is a puppy one. This is like a little two inch. And then we got this guy, and then we got the big boy. So they've got all kinds of different shapes and sizes and colors. They got orange, yellow, and white. And these are the bumpers that I've, other than Dokens, these are the only bumpers that I use. They hold up extremely well. You can actually soak these in buckets with OxyClean and some detergent and then put them in the washing machine. And they'll come out pretty white again, which is really kind of nice. It gives you a, kind of a second life with the bumper, not needing to buy a new one. They're filled with corks. They're gonna float. They will not sink. I have not had one of these sink on me ever. So don't worry about them sinking. And uh, there's different shapes and sizes. They even have the puppy bumper. Hold on, I'm gonna go get that. You guys might think it's cool. All right, so here is, the puppy bumper. They came out with this after I started doing retrieving work with Cora. So this would have been super awesome to have when she was really little and just kind of getting started with some retrieving down the hallway and whatnot. There's no rope. The ends are super tight along the edges and it's just like the perfect retrieving object for a small puppy. But when it comes to bumpers, what you're going to need, I would recommend starting out with three white bumpers and three orange bumpers, but you won't need the orange bumpers until later. Dogs can't really see this color that great. So when you're doing marking, you want to use white or you want to use yellow. You do not want to use orange. Orange is for blind retrieves. So you go put these out and hide them without the dog knowing where they are and then you handle your dog to that blind retrieve. So this makes it just, the color orange makes it to where the dog can't pinpoint it across a field and know exactly where that blind retrieve is going to be. So these are free blind retrieves. These are for your marks and memories and pretty much everything else. You can do memories with the orange bumpers, but with marking, you wanna have something that's gonna contrast against green grass or brown dead vegetation. As, as far as sizes are concerned, it's really up to you, but this is the size that I use most of the time. And uh, now we're, we're getting into the bigger stuff. I'm wanting to get her ready to hunt some honkers. So I'm using bigger retrieving objects like this or the goose token and I'm getting Cora ready to pick up some of those big hootards. Now that my dog became consistent with her retrieving and wanting to, what are you doing? What do you got? That's the puppy bumper, give it back. I'm gonna kick her out. So, uh, tennis ball. You're gonna want quite a few of these. These are the perfect reward once you're past the treat stage. I wish I used the tennis ball more I didn't because I had issues with my dog bolting off with things uh, up until we call her condition. So we didn't use this, but now that she's consistent, this is like Disneyland for my dog. So if she does a good job at the end of a session or a end of a drill, she's getting to play around and do a retrieve with a tennis ball. She absolutely loves it. Great positive reinforcement. Do not underestimate the power of a little yellow fuzzy ball when it comes to your Labrador or any other retriever for that matter. So that's kind of the essentials. I do have some additional items that some of you guys might be interested in. I uh, One is an e-collar. It's extremely popular. There's a lot of guys that use them. I didn't use my e-collar until later on in the training. I wanted to do it without an e-collar. Uh, my goal was to not have to collar condition my dog, but dog I was dealt, it was kind of a necessity. So uh, when it comes to e-collar, they're extremely useful and you want to make sure you use them properly introduce your dog to them properly and do it and just do it right and don't use this to teach new skills so keep that in mind this is for reinforcing things that they already know this is for teaching new skills okay so that's something to keep in mind another thing that's really kind of fun later on is the bumper launcher this one it's okay you want to wear earplugs because it shoots 22 blanks and if you're not wearing earplugs your ears will hurt by the end of this. Even just one shot out of this thing will get your ears ringing. So wear your earplugs. I keep this in an old blind bag with the blanks and some earplugs. And I just grab that bag and go whenever I want to use this. So there's all different types of bumper launchers out there. This is just the one I got. Uh, you just pull it back, it fires, and the bumper goes launching. They're able to extend your marks or if you have somebody else throwing bumpers for you, they can shoot this while they're out there and give, give some good marks for the dog. One last thing that I wanted to add into this video as kind of an additional item that you will probably end up wanting is some garden fencing. Now, when you're introducing 
retrieving to a dog early on, you want to have them in a lane. And so one of the best things that you can do is, and you know, when, when the pup's young, you don't need a lot of space. In your backyard's plenty enough space. What you can do is just go to the store and get some garden fencing and make yourself a lane. And that will help keep the dog from bolting off away from you and off the sides. It's one way in, one way out, and you're there. And so couple that with a check cord and you're on your way to teaching the fundamentals of a retreat. So you're gonna, prob you, you can get away without it, but I highly recommend that you get some garden fencing when you're doing early on retrieving. So that's kind of my rundown of gear that I, I feel is like essential for training a dog. It's not as much as you might think. You know, you can, you can get by without the treat bag. You can just put stuff in your pockets. Um, I feel like you can't neglect the clicker, can't neglect the whistle and the bumpers. So other than that, you just need a good solid training program, follow it and uh, get your dog to the level that you want it to be at. So if you guys enjoyed this and you found it helpful, leave me a like. If you have any other info or comments on this, drop it down below in the comments. I'd love to read them and hear what you guys have to say about essential training items for your dogs. And uh, I guess hit that subscribe button, leave me a like, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.